What if I told you that an AI tool could cut your finance workload in half? Sound too good to be true? Well, not anymore. Stick around because I'm going to introduce you to all the functionalities of Claude AI and how you can use them to look like an absolute rock star at work. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Mike. I'm a senior finance leader, and over the last decade, I've worked in finance everywhere from startups to the Fortune 100. Over that time, automation has become a growing focus for me as our workloads get larger, as our organizations ask for more strategic input and more value from us, and at the same time, our teams get smaller. I also know how hard it is to get access to tools. At a lot of companies, finance doesn't make a lot of investments in itself because it wants to lead the way with responsible budgets. So we don't end up always having access to the tools we necessarily need to transform the finance function. And that's why I'm really focused on bringing you tools that are either very low cost or free. And Claude is one of those tools we're going to look at today that's completely free. What that means is that you can get started today without asking anybody for help. Make sure to stick around to the end because I'm going to share a special bonus to launch your AI journey that you do not want to miss. So let's talk about how to cut your finance workload in half with Claude AI. First of all, what is Claude AI? Well, it's an AI assistant that we're going to use for finance. This is a language model from the company Anthropic. It's a competitor to ChatGPT, Gemini, Copilot, and all those other models you may have heard of. This allows you to work harder, not smarter. It's going to take your inputs. It's going to deliver insightful and actionable results for you. It's always on, always accurate. It processes data tirelessly while you focus on strategy. And it's your finance sidekick. This can handle your grunt work so you can shine where it counts. Some of the tasks that I found Claude really excels at. I don't think it's necessarily the best model for reasoning from what I've tried. What it is really good at is taking larger documents, processing the content of those documents, and coming back and giving you kind of different thoughts and now or analysis on those documents versus trying to, you know, give it data and process it. It is starting to get better at that. You just have the ability recently to be able to upload a CSV to do analysis. I still think some of the other tools are a little bit stronger. So what we're going to use Claude for is things like financial statement analysis. We're going to look for trends, ratios, we'll highlight red flags. We'll do market sentiment analysis, kind of analyze data sources to understand how either management, competitors, or analysts are feeling about a company. We can do risk assessment to model outcome and suggest strategies. And then for reporting, it's really good at automating some of the reporting processes like first pass commentary, summarizing, executive summaries. It's really good at pulling all that content together. I think it does very well with a lot of the written content. Using any AI tool, it's important to have a strategy for prompting because the output is only as good as the input. And for that, I have my Spark framework, which stands for S, set the scene. We want to tell the AI tool how we need it to behave, act as a financial analyst. P, provide a task. We need to tell it specifically what one thing we want it to do for us. A, add background. We're going to give it any context that may be helpful. AI tools thrive on context. You don't want it to have to make any guesses because you may not like the result. R, we're going to request a specific output. Do we want a bulleted list, paragraphs, charts? What do we want? And K, and the most important, in my opinion, keep the conversation going. Tell it to ask you any questions if it doesn't understand a part of the prompt. Again, you do not want AI tools to guess your intent. You want to be able to tell them. And I found that this asking the question at the end is honestly one of the best ways to improve your prompts. Have any questions so far? Go ahead and drop it down in the comments. I read and respond to every single one, and I'm more than happy to help. So we're going to look at three case studies. The first one, we're going to do a financial statement analysis. The second one, we'll do a market sentiment analysis. And then the third one, we're going to complete a risk assessment on a potential investment. All right, that's more than enough talking. Let's jump into Claude and see how we can use this for financial analysis. So for our first case study, we're going to analyze a financial statement. So what I've got for us, I've got AT&T's latest quarterly earnings. So this is their 10K. We're just going to attach this straight into Claude, and then we'll prompt it and see what it gives us. So we're going to go ahead and attach our AT&T quarterly earnings. I've got our prompt all ready to go. So following our Spark framework, we're going to act as a financial analyst, review the attached financial statement. I need help preparing an executive summary with trend analysis, profitability ratios, and red flags. Give me back a bulleted summary in a chart and ask any questions you need to provide the best response. With all that set up, let's submit and see what happens. 
All right, Claude is processing for us. Here we go. It's confirmed what it's doing. It's giving us a summary for 4Q FY 2024. Here's our performance highlights. Here's where we're growing. Have some information on margin and balance sheet. This is really good stuff. And here's the red flag. So we got business wireline down, free cash flows down, and high dependency on direct TV for cash. Oh, and even a little bonus, it's focus for 2025. And now it looks like it's making the chart for us that we asked for. Wow, this is really cool. This is our chart. It calculated key ratios that were not in the file, so it was able to go and do some math for us. This is a really good summary. So we just took an entire 10Q, got it down to about two pages of content, all bulleted, plus it was able to generate a chart for us. Wow, how cool is that? If you're enjoying this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I post videos like this every single Monday and I don't want you to miss a thing. All right, for our next case study, we're gonna complete market sentiment analysis. So a lot of times you can glean insights on a company during the earnings call based both on how management is talking about the company and also how analysts are asking questions about the company, the topic of the questions, and then the kind of general consensus of the responses. So we're gonna attach the earnings transcript and see what Claude is able to do for us. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna attach the latest transcript from earnings. Once again, I've got our prompt ready for us using the Spark framework. We're gonna act as a financial analyst. We're gonna review the attached earnings call transcript. I need help preparing a sentiment analysis. Give me back a summary of the sentiment and a bulleted list with supporting quotes for the sentiment. Ask me any questions you need to provide the best responses. And with that, we'll hit send and see what happens. All right, so we've got it processing now for us. Confirmed it's going to provide a sentiment analysis. The sentiment analysis is overall positive. Management is confident. Here's the supporting evidence. So here are the positive performance highlights called out. Notes about financial strength. Notes about financial strength, talking about strategic execution, and then some information on why forward-looking is optimistic. And then just noting what the negative elements were so we can understand why they're saying that the positive outweighs the negative. And it's things like you know business wireline decline, that's kind of expected and continuing in all of the telecoms. And then it just reiterates why it thinks it's positive sentiment. Look how cool that is. Do you know how long it takes? You can take you hours to do manual sentiment analysis on an 18 page transcript. This just did it in literally seconds. For our last case study, we're gonna have Claude evaluate a business plan and look for risks. This is a business plan we could be considering investing in. Someone submitted it to us to review and we're gonna understand what the risks are so we can make the right investment choice. So we're gonna go ahead We'll take our prompt in again using the Spark framework. Act as a financial analyst, review the attached business plan. I need help preparing a risk assessment. Assess the possible risk of this business plan that I would need to consider before investing. Ask me any questions you need to provide the best response. Then we'll go ahead, we will attach our file. So here's the business plan we have downloaded. There we go, we'll hit send and see what we get back. So Claude's coming back, it's confirming what we're looking for. It's gonna do a risk assessment for Throwback Family Fund. Here's our financial and investment risks. The capital requirements are high. The revenue is potentially optimistic. It's not certain if they can sustain the cash flow. Management's inexperienced, there's a limited market size. This does not sound like a great investment. Marketing competitive risks and questions you should ask before investing. Wow. Again, this is something that to prepare a full analysis of this, you would need to sit down and spend potentially hours evaluating it. You can quickly say, hey, this is you know kind of a go, no go. If you decide to go, you can meet with the investment team. You can do due diligence, ask more questions, but it's a really fast way to kind of qualify an investment without having to sit down and do it itself. And honestly, this is this is very good content. It's honestly quite well written and 
um, for, for kind of a go, no go decision to meet with investors, it's ready to go. If you take away just one thing from this video, I want you to understand that Claude is easy to use. It's really good at reviewing existing documents and providing you thoughts or analysis from those documents. So think about any of those tasks where you're doing a lot of writing or where you're reviewing something and having to kind of synthesize it or analyze it. It's really good at doing the first pass of all of that. And don't forget, it's free. You can't beat that. And now for that special bonus I promised. For viewers of this video, I want to give you a free copy of my book, AI Prompting for Finance. This is the ultimate guide to AI prompting that's going to take you through in-depth how AI tools work, how to structure prompts, expanding on the Spark framework that we looked at today, and also go through hundreds of examples of prompts you can use across finance functions. I usually charge $35 for this, but because you watched this video, I'm going to give it away completely free. Click the link down in the description to get your free copy. That's all for today. I'll catch you in the next video. Until then, this is Mike signing off from F9 Finance. Cheers.